brain and are likely to use it again. That is excellent to see. Um, excellent actually because for two reasons. First, we decided to bring, not to bring a company presentation, but seeing all your hands, which means that you are at least familiar with our product. And second, it is excellent because then hopefully the topic of today will be relevant to you because we will talk how we connect to our users and our friends on Facebook. So, um, we, this is like introduced um, myself. My name is Sonja Unwitter. I'm currently working as marketing director out of Copenhagen, but responsible for all Nordic countries. And this is Anas, um, who is um, our digital expert, also working out of Copenhagen, but also covering with his expertise the whole region and driving them to get more socially active. So within the next 20 minutes, we would like to share the following points with you. And um, seeing the agenda, you might wonder, why is this so broad, starting with countries, starting with consumers? Um, actually, here I have to say I fully agree to what we heard yesterday from Tim from Best Western, who said um, it is really about having the consumer in the center. So this presentation will not be like a show saying, oh, we are so cool, we are so hip, we are now also finally on Facebook. But it is really about where to find the consumer, where to engage with them, and where to connect with them. And therefore, we feel it is very important to somehow invite you to a journey, understanding also our consumers and our region in the Nordics. So, are you ready to head up north? Yes. Take out your gloves, take out your scarves, because it's getting really autumnly cold there at the moment. And I would like to start with introducing our countries and consumers to you. Being a marketeer, I have to say, when I moved to the Nordics one and a half years ago, I really felt the famous brands and companies you meet up there are telling something about the region. So, Lego out of Denmark, it is really that across the Nordic countries, family comes first. I've got 14 people in my team in Copenhagen. Last year, eight out of them went or came into maternity. And those who didn't go to maternity are always rushing off around four to go to kindergarten and then bringing kids to bed and then connecting online again around nine-ish. But really, family comes first. Coming to another Nordic famous brand, which is Sweden, and this is definitely design. It is not only true for furniture, but also true for clothes. And for me, it's a very special impression you get there. For me, it's always like the heel factor. Um, Nordic women dress very hip, very up-to-date, very beautiful design, but it's always pragmatic. So for example, maybe because of the cities have so many cobblestone streets, you hardly see women with heels. They wear beautiful but rather flat shoes. So design is about being simplistic, pragmatic and for everyone. Of course, also very famous for the Nordic countries are the oil companies. What do they tell us about the region? Prices are really high. I was responsible for Asia before I moved to Nordics and I can tell you, hell, just going out for dinner in Bangkok and now going out in Oslo or Copenhagen for dinner, this is the difference. What is for me impressive as a German, um, in Germany you are clever if you manage to minimize your taxes. In the Nordics you are an asshole if you do so, because tax paying is good for the society, so you better do and join in. I'm not sure about the word, people love to pay tax, but at least they are very committed to it. Nokia, okay, struggling at the moment a little bit, but I think still being a good symbol for the region, because it's really across all generation, across all Nordic countries, and I think we also felt this when seeing how many <coughs> participants are coming from the Nordics in this Congress. There's a very high technological affinity. And what was for me amazing, because when, <coughs> when I was growing up, the people with high technological affinity were all normally the ones being pale faced, just sitting in front of their computer indoors. This is different for Nordics. It is really all about outdoor, all about nature. And um, for example, in Norway, children, you would imagine they cannot even walk, take their backpacks and track the fjords together with their parents. I also brought, but I will be quick on this one, some facts and figures. Um, this is just about how do the people live there? And what is also, I think, very interesting to see is there's a lot of space. Just take Iceland, for example. They've got three inhabitants um, per square kilometer. So there's also a lot of nature to really enjoy. And um, 
Also, um, what is quite different from the rest of Europe, yes, there had been a crisis, but somehow it's a very good sign of recovery. Just look at the line of unemployment rates. Norway, for example, 3.3%, Denmark only a little bit more than 5%. So there's really a not too bad economic situation. This means people have high technological affinity, people have lots of space, so they need also technology to connect to each other, and they have the money to do so. Coming a little bit more to our consumer, and I think, Lucy, this might not be directly your target group because we are more connecting to mass market, of course, but I think, Debbie, we might be pretty much after the same kind of woman, so you might find this um, outline of this girl very familiar, I think. For us, this is the woman we target in the Nordic countries. Um, in Bayersdorf, we work a lot with consumer insights. We really track a lot how the consumer is taking what she is doing. And just to share a brief profile with her, quotes, what she would do is, I am what I am. Nordic women have extreme high self-confidence and they really are not at all after male appreciation. So if I would market a product in Brazil, for example, you always would need to have in a TVC a man like <laughs> If you would do this in Nordic, the TVC would be hated. <laughs> in the Nordics, women are not about dressing up and she she, so they are rather modest and they rather believe in the true values of life, which is perfect for a brand like Nivea. They are also pretty loyal to the brands they use once they are convinced of them. And as already outlined, family comes first. We look how they lead their life. We, of course, investigate where to meet them. And you already see online is a very important touch point in the Nordics. And we also try to get a little bit of their personality, investigating with what kind of brands they identify. And for example, this girl, she identifies herself with Volvo, which is clearly a family car and very much safety and reliable and not so much she, she and driving around like a Porsche. And she connects to TDC, which is the a uh, Danish telecommunication company which also already shows how important connection is for herself. <coughs> a little bit more about Nordic <coughs> mindset and trends. The first very important point is that Nordic women really play a different role in society. So when in the rest of Europe it started to talk about multitasking women, this was already a given standard in the Nordics. And men in the Nordics really take an equal share in household and in bringing up kids. I recall my first meeting sitting in the Nordic board at this time, half an hour, no, one and a half hours before the meeting finished, our HR director stood up and said, bye, this week is my week. And I was like, huh? And then he said, yes, of course, this week is my week to pick up kids from kindergarten. And gone he was. So really emancipated woman. The second one is that in Nordic, maybe because of the high outdoor connection, it's really about living green and consuming with a conscience. And I think we heard this yesterday also from Jakob from Karlsburg, especially the Danish government is also creating quite some influence there. So for example, if in the EU they release an ingredient, Danish government loves to somehow play, we are different, we know better, and somehow to contradict the EU release. And last but not least, um, there's really a very high usage and penetration of digital and even at a very old age. So um, across the Nordics, almost 50% are on Facebook, in Norway even 40, 55. Online penetration is um, even higher. And also the 50 plus group, especially for anti-age important, is also very active and the digital spend is increasing. So what does this mean? As I said at the beginning, it's not about that we as Bayersdorf or Nivea want to be, oh, we are trendy, we are in Facebook, but we want to be where our consumers are. And actually, if you see these figures, they are on Facebook. And this means if we want to be where they are, we have to be there as well. Coming to the brand, and this is the per capita spend across the world, across Europe here focused, uh, for Nivea and what we can see here that within the top 15 across the Bayerstoff world there are all five Nordic countries. This means that the Nivea brand is very well established and is somehow liked <coughs> by the consumers and consumed by the consumers in the Nordics. So what do we do now with these knowledge, with these uh, points and with our connection to the brand so far? New ways of communication. I would love to go on.
I try like hell. Okay, so um, as you saw on the previous slide, the consumers like Nivea, they also use Nivea, but what is key important is that we want to really bond to the consumer and really want to be their beloved choice because um, Debbie knows there's quite a lot of competitors out and of course if you're in the center of the heart of a consumer then it's most likely that he or she is loyal to you. What does this mean? How do we get close to them? How to be connected, to be respectful and what happened there through the time? And I think we are all aware of this. This really changed in the last decades. Beginning in the 50s where people hardly had products, it was more product driven information <coughs> which you used to get close and connected. Somehow then, 70s to 90s, this was very much benefit driven, but if you look at advertising at this time, it was very much top down and one way communication. And now, and we've heard this in the last day several times, it's really solution driven and it's more engaging dialogue, it's more listening, it's two way communication. Why this? Consumers really have grown up. They have their own will, they have their own opinion, and they want to be respected for this. They are ready to interact. So important to listen, to identify their needs, and not just tell them top down what to do and what to think. And of course also, and we have heard, and this is I think why we are here all, there's really a drastic change in media landscape and also media consumption. So how, as a very traditional, sometimes not too fast-moving company, um, how to deal with this? <coughs> well, what we said is we want really to bond with the consumer, to be their beloved choice, and this demands in-depth engagement. And the very first step is understand your consumers. This is also why I invited you for this journey. It's really about understanding them and working out their insights. Only when you've done this, you then could start to engage with them. Being where they are, connecting and interacting. So really understanding them and then connecting to them because this means that you can fulfill their needs, that you can also fulfill their information needs and meet them with what they need, when they want it and where they want it. Let me share with you the Bayersdorf strategy for digital where also we move from international because of course there's also a lot of e-brand management happening in our headquarter. How we translate this also from global to regional to make sure we meet the needs of our consumer. Everything starts with search. It's like the base and here our consumer would say I use and like <coughs> online as, as we've seen quite intensively in the Nordics and of course I start looking there on my own when I'm in need of any information. On my own is also one of the key triggers in the Nordics because it's really about doing everything yourself because service is unaffordable. So the search is in our understanding um, the role here in this arena for Nivea as the advice giver. So we provide all relevant information on ingredients and products and of course doing this for the Nordics in the Nordic languages. We of course adjust this to our pipeline, to our activity plans that we have the respective words there of the products which are highlighted. The next element within the digital strategy is um, our page. And here we already have seen this, um, the Nordic consumer are rather loyal once they are convinced of a brand, so they have really like a relevant set which they always go to. And she would say, I'm loyal to the brands I use, so it is interesting for me what it brings out. The role for Nivea in this arena is being the professional. So we use, of course, the international platform which our colleagues prepare, but we adjust this, we twitch it, twist it, we enrich it um, to really meet the needs of the Nordic women. So sometimes we change the wording to be less she-she, to be more down-to-earth, to be easier to understand, and of course we provide the respective information according to campaigns uh, which are out. Next element are newsletters. And here our Nordic girl would say, my family is most important to me. So um, I don't dedicate lion's share of my time to shop around or just to earn money, but I really want to spend whatever free minute I have with my family. Which means um, if Moses is not coming to the mountain, the mountain has to come to him. So this is the role here. Nivea in this arena is somehow like the salesperson and we really tailor made our newsletter very, very regional, sometimes even local. Um, integrating special offers, um, integrating ruffles or competitions where they could uh, participate and this comes 
linking to her wish to spend most of the time with her family, this comes very conveniently online directly at home to her. Well, and last but not least, it is social media. And here, our girl would say, for me, it is very important to be and stay connected to the ones I love. I want to share good times with my family and with my friends. And this is then where Nivea kicks in in the role. In this arena, we also really want to be a friend, meaning we use some of the international approaches, but uh, we use them rather as starting point and then add all what is needed for the region, all what is needed for a country to really live up to being a friend <laughs> and to connect to our Nordic consumers quite regularly with um, some posts um, per week. Facebook is pretty new for us. We only launched in the Nordic countries Facebook April, May this year. So it's pretty hot and fresh and we are still collecting a lot of experiences. Social media. We want to be a friend. What is a friend? A friend is there when needed. A friend listens. A friend is the one also to have fun with. And a friend is for lifetime. So with these pretty high demands, we were wondering, we want to be there because our consumers are there, but how can we live up to this? And how can we really be a friend for the consumers in the Nordic countries? And actually, what we thought, what we did, what we learned in the first five months, Anas is going to share with you. Yes. If we just go uh, back and see uh, this, uh, the news figures from, uh, from Facebook, so we can see we got some really busy Facebook countries uh, in the Nordics, and that's what <coughs> we have to deal with every day. Um, and as, as Sonia said, it's not only young people, but it's also a lot of old people, uh, for example, in Denmark. Uh, one million, we got one million users plus 35 now. So, so we, we have to, when we communicate on Facebook, it's not only for the young, but also for the older audience. So as we know, when we, all the fishes are there, we also want to be there. So uh, we have to, to be on Facebook and that's why we started five months ago. So uh, prior to uh, starting on Facebook, we really had some discussions about uh, some issues that we knew was going to come, and that was country resources, what was uh, our strategy going to be like, and uh, crisis management. I won't go into crisis management today, but uh, for country resources, we decided that uh, every country responsible should use two hours per day on Facebook, and they should uh, have the eyes on the page 24-7 uh, and also in the weekend. And the solution was that Denmark was doing this internally. Sweden and Finland outsourced <coughs> this for, uh, for agencies. And then uh, Norway and Iceland are still on hold because of manpower. So uh, in this process, we, we learned that you re we really don't ha shouldn't underestimate the resources uh, you, you have to use for Facebook. It really takes time to be a good post on Facebook. Uh, so we have to accept this learning curve. Uh, and again, if you're not on Facebook already and you want to go there, you really want to do this. Otherwise, there's this chance of ending up in the Facebook cemetery. And if you don't want to know what that is, that's the company who g goes into Facebook, get a lot of friends, and then they don't have the manpower anymore. And there's just a, pa web there's a pa Facebook page with a lot of friends, and they don't do anymore. So if you want to do Facebook, you really have to use manpower for it. And of course, uh, when we uh, outsource this, we also want our external agencies to talk the Nivea talk. So we educate them once in a while on, on different workshops. And about the strategy, uh, we really <laughs> wanted to adapt the Facebook mindset to be social, right and act as a friend, as Sonia said. And uh, we didn't put too many limits on how many posts per week, but we said as many as that makes sense. And we wanted the content to be 60% Nivea related and 40% everyday conversations. Um, and that everyday conversation could be like, for example, when the Swedish uh, crown uh, prince, princess couple was, was mar married, we said uh, congratulations with this and we got a hell of a lot of uh, comments on this. Um, and in this process, we, we learned that, of course, they like our brand, brand otherwise they wouldn't be a friend uh, with us, but uh, we, we have to talk about these daily, uh, daily conversation issues. And another learning is there's always best posting times to use on Facebook. 
like with new, newsletter marketing, it's always good to send in the morning, in, at lunch, or late afternoon, or evening when people can open the newsletter. It's the same with Facebook. Uh, people got time to be social around these times. So remember this. So we, when we finally came into Facebook, we of course had focus on three things. That was drive traffic, our welcome page, and the content calendar. And uh, of course, we have to drive traffic. And what we did was doing some uh, Facebook banners. And that's why we, how we got all our friends in the beginning. So it of course makes sense that if we don't do advertising, no one knows about the page. It makes sense. And the welcome page is also very important. What we strive for is having a welcome page. It's actually not the one you see right here, but where we actually tell the visitors what, what's in it for me being a friend. And the calendar is also very important. This is just an example of our calendar. We have, as you can see, four different uh, subjects, but um, it's very important for the poster to have uh, a calendar to be inspired from. We don't say you have. Uh, I don't. I don't tell the responsible to to use the post. They should it be inspired from the post and maybe use them. Uh, but it's basically up to themselves to to do the best posts. Uh, and so it's always important for the responsible to have some good posts. So it's always good to have posts for a rainy day. So because I know some companies every Monday they come. Okay, what what should I write now? So status today is, uh, this is the results we have achieved and how we measure and our top learnings. Uh, what we have achieved is uh, friends, it, it goes in the right direction after these five months. We all know that friends is not everything. Uh, the more friends we get, the more good content we have to bring and the more engaging comments or posts we have to do. Um, and how we measure it is, I think it's very different from com company to company. But uh, we use the engagement level, and this one we are actually just uh, made somehow together with uh, the Facebook of the Facebook company in uh, Denmark, and he called it the IPM engagement level. Maybe you know this one, but uh, the for uh, the formal is up here, and uh, so of course every month we see how the level goes. And of course, you can see since from August to September, we got a lot more fans. So that's why the engagement level goes down because the, the, the yeah, uh, the more friends we get, of course, we have to make more better engagement, engaging posts to have the level go up or be steady. Yeah. And uh, about top learnings. This is very important, I think, for all of us, is that, of course, they love our brand, otherwise they wouldn't say they're friends, but we have to remember, and this is all what all analysis says, that what they actually want from us is discounts, promotions, free samples, and be able to support uh, the company. So remember, it's not all, all only about nice conversations. They really want something for us, so we have to bring something to the table. So it's about a fi finding a really, really good balance in this content calendar uh, between offers, product-related posts, and friendly comments about everyday life. That's, the, that's the, what we have to do. And another learning we have done is uh, simple competitions really works. We are very lucky because we got a lot of products in our portfolio, and we also got some that are not that costly. So what we do basically is that we uh, s send a post out. We say the first 100 <laughs> email addresses to our inbox will get a small present. And then we send out the present. And uh, the day after, we get a hell of a lot of buzz on Facebook. And people are so happy with this. And uh, this works every time. So if we can do these small activations once a month, we can ac actually start this, activate the collective gene and hopefully get a lot of ambassadors. So the here and now activities with our sending the day and uh, sending the present out the day after really works for us. And I think it will work for a lot of companies. Yes. Yes. And the last learning is, of course, as everyone know, po polls really works because uh, people want to talk. They want to have their say to, to something. So do polls, <laughs> basically. Okay, and then let's wrap up all this in some conclusions, which we made after our first five months on Facebook. We said a friend should be there when needed. 
This means for us, when being active on Facebook, we have to ensure that there is 24-7 connection and we have to ensure that answer and reaction happens in a speedy, in-time way. We said that when we want to act on Facebook and want to be a friend, this friend has to listen. So we need to invite and we invite our consumers to generate content and we let them share and talk and take the lead. Also sometimes when uh, we hear things which we do not 100% like, but they are really, really active. We have, for example, at the beginning, because Nivea just turned 100 years, um, the invitation that they could talk about their Nivea experience. It was amazing how many pictures from their grandmas and from whatever people uploaded and told really emotionally touching stories. So we listened. A friend is the one to have fun with, and I think this is also a, a very important one. So we have to be active and we have to refer to things which resonates. And this is, of course, brand. But this is also things of daily life, so you always have to make sure that there's a mix. A friend is there for a lifetime. If you're really connected, it's not like a short-term, one-night stand affair, but it's really a long-time connection. So once you start Facebook, make sure you have the resources, because you cannot simply get out again without disappointing. And most likely, you also do not want to get out again. So what we had as one of the key learnings, when being on Facebook, be a friend, talk like a friend, and um, here also one thing which uh, for me was very interesting to hear yesterday um, from Christopher from BT, where he said, hey, actually if you only talk about yourself, you will just talk to yourself and nobody else. So this is also what we learned, uh, don't take yourself too important, uh, be a friend and have fun together with your fans and the ones who use and like you. Thank you very much. Actually, one more thing, um, because uh, we also wanted, seeing how many of you like us and how many of you use us, we wanted to give two things to you. First of all, Annas will be on stage uh, to answer all your questions. But as most of you might have missed our beautiful contest, which is connected to our cooperation with Rihanna, where you were in a position to get mini tins, I will make the animation girl and walk around and help yourself to some really nice products. Very good, thank you very much.